have come to the desert in northern Syria to look for evidence of a mass murder. The first genocide of the 20th century. My guide is Bishop Panossian. And like most Armenians, the remains of his family lie in the sands around here. They brought them here and they choose separated men from women and children to make easy to kill them. My grandfather and grandmother killed fish and my father escaped from here. The local Arab Bedouin tell the bishop that the site of Magaday, an infamous Turkish extermination camp, is just up the road. In 1915, the Ottoman Turks expelled the entire Christian Armenian population from their homelands in eastern Turkey. Then they forced them south in death marches to the Syrian deserts. If they survived, Magaday was to be one of the final destinations. Here the Turks slaughtered thousands in the crudest of fashions. Groups were tied together and were burnt or clubbed to death. And today it's not hard to find the evidence in this dried out river bank. This appears to be a bone from a human leg. And after it's exposed to the air for the first time in 87 years, it collapses. Just next to it is the outline of a skull. With the dirt gone, the white cranium is revealed. The better one still can't believe the slaughter that took place here. These hills are full of Armenian bones. Everywhere you look and scratch the surface, skull shards, finger bones and parts of spinal cords appear. When the Ottoman Turks had finished their campaign of slaughter, at least a million Armenians had been killed. It was uh, planned very carefully and decided and studied, organized genocide. This is the first genocide? Yes. Later, Bishop Panossi would track down the only Armenians surviving in the area. Nori Latif says his father, Mega, who was eight years old at the time, arrived with 5,000 other Armenians at Magaday. It was a scene of horror. The Bedouin saved hundreds of Armenian children fleeing from the massacres. Nori's father was brought up by an Arab family. He later married and had 11 children. They all now live in this small village as Arabs. But Magar always made his children aware of their Armenian heritage. And Nori hasn't forgotten. They are asking us strongly, uh, shaking us, that uh, we, we like to return to our identity, we like to return to our homeland. What is the way? You are a, you are a bishop, you came here, you saw us, uh, and 
and uh, ask questions. So we are telling you our secret. We cannot deny our they say this is their you, you say we cannot deny our identity. It is it is something burning in their side. And very really naturally. And a tough but the reality is that they have nothing to return to. The Turks have destroyed their villages and churches. So to keep their inspirations alive, the bishop leaves them a gift. The Armenian alphabet. Before the bishop returns to his Armenian parish in Beirut, he has one more pilgrimage to make. As the Ottoman Turks continued with their slaughter, thousands of bodies littered the desert and fouled the rivers. They brought the bodies and the half-dead to this place, Shadadi, a network of caves. Well, uh, everybody come, make prayers, and this is a tomb. So, all this area you are seeing, you see, uh, it's not easy, one and a half million deported, they are killing and not finished, you see. So, they, uh, they, they, they saw there are caves here, they brought them, they started and uh, threw down. The locals say this labyrinth continues underground for 60 kilometers. Deep underground lies the physical evidence that the Turks wanted to hide from the world, one of the biggest mass graves of the 20th century. For almost a century, the mass graves of the Syrian desert have not been disturbed or examined. They are a testament to a Holocaust denied. Much of the world still does not recognize the Armenian genocide, and the Turks strongly deny any role in it. We want them to come and see and to witness what happened, why they did it, and to confess that this is done by them. They cannot uh, prove the, the, the against of this. Uh, no any possibility for them and for other uh, people or nations or great powers saying that uh, it, it didn't happen. <laughs> In Turkey, the government is pouring a lot of money and effort into denying the Armenian genocide. They have set up the Armenian Research Institute to manage the denial. And its spokesperson, Aslan Terioglu, claims the mass killings are lies, someone else's fault, or caused by disease. <laughs> At the time, the world reacted with horror and the crimes were denounced in Paris, Washington and London. Dozens of diplomats, historians and journalists documented and photographed the genocide. Viscount James Bryce, investigating the situation for the British government, concluded in 1916 that three quarters, or four fifths, of a nation had been wiped out. Henry Morgenthau, the American ambassador to the Ottoman Empire, and one of the first to warn the world of the massacres wrote, none of the horrors of any war compare with the lot of the Armenians.